<clears throat> All right, the 24 hour layover. By far the longest stop we're gonna take on the entire Iditarod, and it is an incredibly important part of the race. For a musher, when you're on this 24 hour layover, it's a much anticipated reprieve where we get to just focus on working with our dog team, making them comfortable, getting calories into their body, getting them good sleep. These are the only things we have to worry about. We don't have to worry about making it down the trail quickly. It's something I think every musher enjoys on the race. Mushers tend to focus on racing a lot. I think it's important that you really get better at stopping, better at camping. So I practice several 24 hour layovers throughout our training year. I'll do 300 plus miles of training, stop for a 24 hour period and treat it exactly the way that I would on the Iditarod. The idea being that I wanna make these 24 hours, which I think are just as important as any other 24 hours on the race, as beneficial as possible for every member of the team, every single dog and myself and our equipment. So when I get into the 24, the first thing that's a priority to me, did I do everything leading up to this point correctly? Is my team at the right point of needing to have a long break, but not having crossed a line where 24 hours of rest isn't enough to make them better than they were starting the race. That's my goal here. But when I actually hit the checkpoint that I'm gonna take my 24 in and I start doing the things that I'm gonna do there, my first priority is I need every dog in this team to eat a full big meal. I need their bellies to be stuffed. So what that means is working back from there, I'm not gonna be snacking the dog as much coming into that 24 hour rest. I want them to be hungry when we arrive. They have plenty of time to get the calories in them, but I need them to eat that big meal within the first hour and a half of arriving. Here's why. Well, usually when I stop in a checkpoint for only three or four hours, I'm trying to get them fed and bedded down as quickly as possible because they only have a few hours to sleep before we got to get up and go again. But on this stop, I'm going to get several meals into them before we leave and letting them sleep is paramount. So I'm going to take a little more time, about an hour and a half to get all my chores done. I'm going to put all the ointment on the feet. I'm going to rub down any muscle that I think could possibly even have an issue. I'm going to put the extra shoulder jackets on the dogs, the wrist wraps. I'm going to make sure they have more straw than they've ever seen in their life, all piled up underneath them. They're going to be comfortable. I don't worry about the sled and the equipment just yet. All about the dogs right now. So I get all that stuff done. I get that big meal into them. Now with their bellies full, I can let them sleep for eight hours without touching them. Maybe seven and a half. <laughs> I also get seven and a half hours of solid sleep. So this is really important, this first window. Think about this. If every dog eats their big meal and you know they've got a full belly, you can just let them sleep soundly, solidly for nearly eight hours. If you go out there and all the dogs, except for one, eat that big meal and that one dog thinks, eh, you know, I had a bunch of snacks, I think I'm good for now. I can't leave him for eight hours without another meal. That means after three or four hours, I have to wake myself up again, not as productive of sleep. If I only get three hours and I have to go do something, I come back and try to get another nap. Also, when I go out to feed this one dog, what do you think all the rest of the dogs are gonna do? They see me come over to the team and they're all gonna pop up, they're gonna be awake, they're gonna say, hey, you got any of that for me? <laughs> so I really think it's important to have the entire team do this whole process as a team. So after we get that first big meal into them, the dogs get a nice long sleep, I get a nice long sleep, I come out there and give them their second meal, big meal. And the other nice thing is having had seven and a half or eight hours from their previous meal overnight, they're all hungry. And again, all of them eat well. So I really want all the dogs on the same schedule. It's more sleep for me and them. After I do the second feeding, I'm gonna do a few other little doggy chores. Again, I'm gonna do all the vet care on the dogs, the feet, the muscles, all that good stuff. I'm also gonna do maybe a few sled repairs or personal equipment repairs that I can take back inside of a building with me. But still, it's mostly about just recovery time. This is a point where I'm hoping that I can lay down and sleep for another solid span of time. We should have been there about probably gonna be 19 hours, maybe 20 hours that we've been there. And this is when I give them their third big meal. And again, they're gonna eat everything because they're on a regular schedule. The last meal wasn't just a few hours ago. Before I feed them this meal, I am gonna get every dog up and take them for a little walk get their stomach moving, get some other stuff out of their system, make a little more room in their belly, make sure that their, their movements look good as far as how they're walking around, there's no hitch in their gait, and do a nice inspection. And I just wanna move all of them around because they've probably been sleeping pretty solidly 
for 18 or so hours now. So I'm gonna move them all around, take them for a little walk. It's just a fun time to hang out with them, bring them back to the straw. Now they're all awake having just walked. I'll feed them another, their third big meal. Uh, after they've eaten that meal, now is the time that I will start tinkering with my sled and fixing tow line and doing stuff outside because I know that I'm likely to keep these dogs awake when I'm working around the sled. But now they've been sleeping for nearly the last 20 hours straight. So. They're pretty well rested up, and this is a good time for me to be out there doing that, those other chores. Also, I'm going to be a lot more efficient doing this stuff rather than bumbling around in the middle of the night trying to remember what was broken on my sled or how to tie a basic knot, right? So I think how you do the 24 is pretty important. After that third meal, they have probably five four to five, maybe even six hours before we have to take off. I usually don't overfeed them when I leave. The 24. I'll give them a snack maybe right before we go or an hour before we take off. Just a light meal, but I also don't like going too far out of my 24. So I might stop again only 30 or 40, maybe 50 miles after my 24, knowing that even though they've had a couple big meals, they've had a day of rest, their minds are all charged up, their muscles are charged up, they want to go out there and attack the trail, but I want to just do a short run ease them back into running, stop again. I trust that I can get another big meal into these dogs, probably 40 miles down the trail from where I had taken my 24. So if I do all this correctly, I'm gonna leave my 24 with a dog team that is completely rested up, has great body fat, is into the routine of running and resting, is into the habit of eating well at every checkpoint. And that's why I would say this team now is a little bit trail hardened and they're a better team than what we started the race with. That's the goal on the 24 hour layover. Thank you.